Nej. All right. So, welcome to the first live AMA for the Review Network team. Uh, my name is Brad, and I'm an advisor for the project. And today on the live stream, we have Peter, who is the COO and co-founder of Review Network. We have Ivan, who is the CTO and co-founder of Review Network. And uh, both guys are currently working out of the office in Serbia. And we also have Reinhardt on the stream today as well. Reinhardt is the CFO and partner of the project, and he's currently in Barcelona. So welcome, guys. Thank you. So much. All right. And how's everyone doing today? We're pretty good. Yeah, actually. doing good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Excellent. So we're all on different time zones, uh, 9 p.m. over here, and uh, around, around 1 p.m. for you guys, I think. So yeah, but that's, uh, that's what we're used to. So let's get straight into it. Um, so first up, I want to ask uh, Peter and Ivan. So what is Review Network and, and how did it come about? Yeah, that's a great question for a start. So basically at its core, Review Network is a way to connect consumers and businesses. What this means is that right now it's difficult for people who like buy products or want to know uh, which products are the best to choose from the like sea of options and uh, to be sure that they can be certain in their choice. And on the other hand, it's hard for companies to know what their consumers are thinking. And uh, like to improve the products, you need to tap into the, the opinions of your consumers. So that's what we're trying to solve at Review Network here by doing two parts, basically, market research and online reviews. I'd say that's, that's enough for the intention of crypto. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. How's okay. that? Well, people are going to use it, they're going to spend their crypto, they're going to write reviews, they're going to answer surveys, they're going to earn crypto with, without having to be crypto savvy. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's, cool. That was the idea, basically, to allow anyone who is not necessarily uh, knowing anything about the crypto technology to just use the app and do what they already do, like write reviews and answer some surveys and get rewarded in tokens for providing their opinions. Yeah get all the benefits of blockchain without all the technical parts. Yeah, I mean, sure, we, we do use blockchain in the in the background thing, but it's like in the UX, we are going to do it so that we allow for mass adoption, so that we allow for mass adoption for the platform. Okay, so I guess it, I guess in the, you know, the, the easiest way to explain it is it's a market research platform. It also has an online review component to it. Um, and at yeah. the same time, obviously, we're, we're rewarding users for participating, for providing quality feedback. Okay, so so I guess the big question here then is, you know, why do we need Review Network? I mean, what, what are the current problems that, let's start with the market research side of things. What are the current problems that the market research industry are facing? So basically we right now have two types of market research companies that do market research for their clients, which are like businesses, that want to research their products. You have like traditional market research companies that do the, the research usually offline. They have their large lists of people that they created during the years and they distribute their surveys either through like uh, phone calls or uh, paper surveys, or even some, some of them did adopt the internet technologies and do have some, some support for that. But on the other hand, you have uh, platforms like SurveyMonkey, for example, that allow you to do online research to distribute a survey to a large number of users. But there are problems with both of them. Basically, if you look into the, the traditional market research companies, the price for one answer, if you're doing phone calls, is around $40, which is really high. And basically by using blockchain, one of the things we can do is make it much more efficient and much cheaper because we will be uh, connecting the businesses directly to consumers. And if you look like uh, the, the other part of that, the platforms like SurveyMonkey, they are centralized and basically the data and the privacy of data is an issue there. Uh, also, there's an there's issue of uh, the people not being rewarded for their answers that in some case is true uh, and we can use blockchain there to reward them basically with our tokens. Okay. 
Quite interesting. So, I mean, I guess one of, one of the big problems there, is, I guess, is the quality of data that, that companies are currently receiving. So, Review Network, it's, it's a platform that's t- tackling worldwide market research. Yeah, that's true. So, basically, as you said, uh, the quality of data is uh, also one problem, as is the speed of gathering the data, as is the targeting of people. And as you said, the privacy of users' data and also the company's data, which is important because, like, you don't want the answers to your uh, confidential corporate survey to get taken by your competitor. So we can tackle all those problems by using blockchain and related technologies. Uh, for the quality of data, for example, we can elaborate a bit. Uh, the point is that we want to allow businesses to create uh, surveys themselves without going to a market research company so that anyone from the marketing team can create a survey using our tools, which will allow them to create statistically sound surveys by using techniques like asking the same question in different ways so you can check if the answers match, if they are like uh, valid. And other techniques, uh, for example, we will allow templates uh, templates for uh, different kinds of surveys so to make it easier for businesses to create and run those campaigns. And one important thing uh, is that we will allow advanced targeting based on demographics. So if you if you take an example like Facebook ads, if you use them, you know how many filters there are that you can use to refine your audience. And we plan to do a similar thing, but unlike Facebook, you're not going to like share your data. Uh, our plan is to, to make your data your own and private and only uh, on your device but still use some cryptographic protocols to, to make sure that we can prove that you match the demographic targeting of the companies. And okay. uh, another thing that this allows us to do is to have much larger response rates because you're incentivizing people basically by rewarding them with tokens. Okay, so I mean, that's that's a, it brings me to another question, which I think, you know, um, it's at the forefront of, of everyone's minds at the moment. And that is data privacy. So I guess you know that's it's something that over the years we've just come to accept the fact that when we sign up to particular services, and you mentioned Facebook as a good example, that that our data is no longer ours, right? But what you're saying is that Review Network's effectively going to, I guess, uh, give the user control of their own data again. Yeah, exactly. We're building a protocol which will allow users to take control of their data completely. So. As Peter said, we aim to create a system where users' data never leaves their devices unless they choose to. So our protocol should allow for users to share their data and sell them on the open marketplace if they choose to do so. Okay, excellent. So um, as, as viewers are posting questions, if the question's relevant to what we're talking about right now, I'll, I'll throw them to you guys. Um, for those of you who are watching the stream, any questions you guys have, put them in, and we'll answer them at the end of the stream if they don't currently fit into what we're talking about. So two questions have actually popped up which are relevant right now. So someone said that they've used Yelp and similar services. What makes us different? So you've sort of covered it, but if you had to explain it, I guess, in, in a quick sentence, how would you do, how would you differentiate us? Certainly, if I had to explain it really in a short sentence, it would be that those services are centralized, and that gives us two problems. One is the transparency. So you cannot have access to the raw data that Yelp has of reviews. And that's a problem because uh, it would be great if anyone could check uh, what are the real data behind the interface that you're seeing on Yelp. If anyone could check uh, what are the real data behind the interface that you're seeing on Yelp. And the other problem is uh, basically governance. So Yelp has the sole responsibility and uh, is able to make decisions on behalf of everyone because it's like it's a private business and that's how it works. But uh, if we create a decentralized platform for reviews, we can put the power into the online review side. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you know we, we, we are different from the current platforms out there that provide users with online reviews? Well, as I- Peter we are going to jump in. Oh, cool. Go yeah. ahead, Ryan. I love actually this topic because, as you already know, I'm a really passionate uh, diver, and I love going diving like in 
especially like in Asia, the wonderful dive sites. But the problem is like always when I go to Asia and try to explore a new dive site, it's so difficult finding out like what is the truth. Because like when you're an unexperienced diver and you go diving for the first time and you see a fish for the first time and you're on the water the first time, you go out of the water and you review the dive school and you get five out of five star. However, can you really evaluate the quality of a dive teacher? Can you really evaluate the security standards without having any previous experience? Or can you compare this dive site really to other dive sites? No, you cannot. So why I joined Review Network was because it's also like one of my main problems. I love traveling, I love sports, but it's so difficult of finding actually really good reviews that tell you the truth. So on the review side, um, I really like this feature of like this demographic filtering. So I can choose reviews which are relevant to my profile. I'm an advanced diver, so I only choose reviews from advanced divers with more than 50 dives in the last two years. I choose um, reviews from people maybe close to my peer group. Yeah, maybe like people from Germany or Central Europe because we have like similar preferences compared to other people. So it really makes this review network or their review platforms yeah more precise yeah and that's really missing out there because there's so much noise and it's so difficult actually to find out who wrote this review and is it a true review and uh, that really really annoyed me in the last few years and it took us so much time and honestly when i earned some tokens on the one hand by filling out like some surveys and then i can use these tokens to get like quality information, that's absolutely amazing. Okay, I mean, yeah, you're, you're exactly you're exactly right. For me, uh, it's food, and you know, I mean, I think we, you know, everyone in the team has their own little reason as to why they were very excited about this. And to go off what Reinhardt's saying, for me, it was food. You know, when I'm traveling, I, I want to see food from from locals. I want to see food reviews from, I guess, guys or girls that you know share the same passion for food as I do. So yeah, I mean, it's a very exciting feature on the platform and it's not something that's currently being done. So a question that's just come up is what, what if somebody abuses the, the reviews? Like how, how are we sort of, I guess, um, filtering out fake reviews from real reviews? Yeah, that's, that's a core question of what we're trying to do actually. So uh, by adding a layer of community validation, in our protocol, we can ensure that the reviews are valid. And there are actually two parts of that equation. At first, we have uh, validators who are kind of special users on the system. You can become a validator if you prove your um, good intentions and uh, if you prove to the community that you are um, make it in, making it better, basically. And you do that by writing reviews and answering surveys and basically Staying active in, in the yes. platform. Yeah. Yes. You build a profile, effectively. You're, you're building a reputation within the platform. That's exactly right. Yes. And uh, then if, you, if someone writes a review, it doesn't get published immediately. It has to go through the process of community validation. And that process is basically when we take seven validators and uh, pick them at random, and then uh, they vote if the, the review is valid or not. Now. That voting part is tricky because you can have subjective opinions going in there. It has to be like a repeatable process, a provable process. And because of that, we have a, a set of guidelines when writing reviews and when validating them. So th those are basic rules like a review cannot contain someone's personal information or it cannot defame someone, basic stuff like that. And at first, uh, we are the ones who are publishing that information. But as we said, we aim to make the governance of the reviews decentralized. And in the future, we will add a layer of community governance, so kind of voting for the rules that should be present to validate reviews. Yeah, exactly. And the more users we have, the yeah. more strength the platform itself has. And the community governance is something that's going to go up in value the more users we have. So, okay. yeah. This and so basically when the review is validated by those seven validators in the, the sense that the majority of them vote, either it should be published or it shouldn't, then that action is basically executed on the platform and everyone gets either rewarded or not rewarded. 
uh, because when you write a review, you need to submit the stake in REW tokens, which will be taken away if your review is not good. So basically you're staking tokens to say, I believe that this information is good, it's correct, it's valid. And uh, if you do pass, your review does pass the validation, then you get your stake back plus a reward. And also on the other hand, the validators are being rewarded with tokens for their validations. And the ones that uh, are in the minority, they get their stake tokens also uh, lost. Yeah, you know, we, we are aware that we cannot completely eliminate bad reviews from the internet. We, we, we do our part in cleaning up the net a bit, but, you know, we do everything we can to, to sort this space a bit, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. difficult, so. Yeah, well, whenever you have a human component, you exactly. cannot be 100% sure of something. But what we do is that that validation layer is only the first step. The other step is the larger community kind of feedback mechanism where people do things like upload, download, say the review was helpful to them or not. And by that compound activity, you can judge a review's true value over time. And obviously, as the number of users grows and the platform grows, that uh, feedback will really, really get the best of the reviews on top. And there you have it. You get the go-to platform for reviews that you know are actually good and community validated. So, okay, excellent. So, I guess another question that I get quite often is, you know, what I guess uh, what what what's built into the platform? You know, apart from the the human element of uh, validating reviews. What's built in to sort of stop fake reviews? You know, the bots, somebody sitting there just reviewing, you know, 20 places at once from different countries around the world that they've clearly never been to. Do we have an element of, I guess, um, machine learning built into the platform that's going to help stop these in the tracks before they even get to the validators? Exactly, that's true. But uh, before that, it's important to, to note that there are like two parts actually to the review network. We have the protocol, which will be implemented on the blockchain and it's open source. Anyone can use it to create like either they, their own apps or whatever they want to do with it. Uh, and on that protocol, we will create the review network platform that will implement the online reviews in the most broad sense. But like then anyone can create an application that builds on review network blockchain protocol to create a niche review site. So <laughs> that's, that's the important part to note because some of the features are built into the protocol and some of the features will be built into the platform. For example, as you mentioned, machine learning is definitely a thing that we will use to improve our ranking and scores and detection of fake algorithms. Uh, Reinhardt can also uh, <laughs> intersect here because there, there, uh, there were some um, research papers, post scientific research from U US uh, universities that show us how to deal with these fake reviews. And uh, from the like um, protocol side of it, we have other things like not being able to post more than five reviews or 10 reviews, depending on your reputation level. And uh, the other thing is if there's a product that doesn't have a lot of reviews, the difficulty of writing a review for that product is higher. So only people with high reputation are trusted to leave a review there. So there are all these uh, little things that we, we have in place to, to make sure that the reviews are uh, the best they can be. Okay, so I guess to sum it up, for those listening, the platform has both a human element, so community members validating reviews, and then we also have the, I guess, the algorithms and the code that's also there to, to stop these fake reviews. All right, so I guess the, the next big question is, uh, a few people are asking questions that are all sort of similar. I mean, how does one cut? You know what, we're gonna come back to that. I wanna ask the other question, and this is one that I get a lot. Why blockchain? I guess that's the big thing, right? Like at the moment, there are a lot of companies out there that are, I guess, going into, going into an ICO, and you have to ask the question, I mean, do you need blockchain to actually execute your project? And because well, we have if we want the platform to be truly community driven and community truly community driven and community governed, then blockchain is the technology to go to. Is that as someone said it's a beautiful new technology that allows us to implement and scale our vision? So. <laughs> <laughs> because there are um, a lot of things to it. 
So the most basic thing that you can when evaluating a project or a blockchain is asking yourself, is blockchain the right technology for it? Because if it's not, then you just end up with a product that's slower, more expensive to use, and doesn't work as well. What do we actually want from our platform? I mean, regarding the online reviews, we want that to be publicly available, and we want it to be censorship proof. I mean, those two issues alone are worth the blockchain technology implementation. And we have always the layer of um, the token economics that blockchain systems allow us to implement. So basically, by having tokens and create the complex systems and like mechanism design and game theory to make sure that all the actors in the platform are behaving to benefit the platform. So we reward the good actors and punish the bad ones. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's one part of it, and there are other reasons, of course, like implementing policy and anonymity for users, data protection that we will be having. Are you the minority? Value transfer. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, so question then. Let's say, for, let's say hypothetically, I own a coffee shop here in Melbourne, and I'm serving really bad coffee, bad coffee, bad food, bad service. Everyone's getting negative reviews about my coffee shop on Review Network. And let's say one day I just wake up because I've got no business left, and I decide, hey, you know, what my ways, I'm going to start, you know, serving quality coffee, quality food, and great service. If I came to you and I said, hey guys, I've decided to change my ways. Here's, here's a stack of money. Can you guys wipe my negative reviews for me and bump them up to positive reviews? Because I promise I'm gonna do the right thing moving forward. Is that possible? Yeah, that's a great question. It's not possible with our system. But with centralized systems, it is theoretically possible and people have been known, businesses have been known to be buying reviews from, from um, we write to the model. Yeah, that's the one main thing we try to fix for our platform. Why you cannot do that? First of all, the data and the community does because it's decentralized. You cannot. I guess the question quite often is, you know, I guess, apart from the human element, it's valid. But what's built in to sort of stop fake reviews? You know, the bots, somebody sitting there just reviewing. Guys, uh, can you hear that uh, feedback? Yeah, that yeah, you can see it. An yeah. element of, I guess, um, machine learning built into the platform that's going to help stop these in the tracks before they even get to the validators. I'm not sure where that uh, echo is coming from. Has anyone got the stream running in the background with sound? With the review network. We have the protocol, which will be implemented. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. It stopped. Perfect. Um, okay, excellent. So, so blockchain, it's obviously it's something that the platform needs to be able to actually execute the vision. So that's good. So I guess the, the next big question is, um, a few people have asked, so how does one get involved with the platform right now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's a great question. And it relates to our timeline, basically, of development. You're planning to launch a beta version, which will be public for anyone to try it out by the end of the year. And right now we have this uh, like campaign that allows you to sign up, pre-register for the beta version. And we have like over 100,000 yeah, people we have all signed up already, which is huge. Yeah. Massive. <laughs> so, yeah, look, looking at it now, there's a, just over 100,000 users. Uh, I mean, we, we originally opened this up for 25,000 users, right? And we expected this to sort of last us the period of the ICO. Yeah, and quickly. Response has been yeah, well, that should be the interest. Yeah, and, and the demographic as well. So we were actually going through the data. The demographic of all the users signed up is is quite very, which is, which is really interesting and, and really quite useful as well. Yes. Even though we are getting a lot of uh, like bots, we are dealing with them. So we have real users. There are <laughs> things in place that even set up. So we, yeah, yeah, we apologize <laughs> if we are making things difficult for you, but and your bots, sorry. <laughs> well, that's it, right? I mean, I think with anything where you know 
because obviously users when they sign up they need to get their initial tokens right so that they can start leaving reviews and state those tokens so i mean whenever you have something where you know effectively similar to an airdrop you're going to see a lot of bots but um but yeah as you guys said there are quite a few mechanisms in place to to catch them and, and get them out of the database which is great yeah. all right excellent so um exciting news what's going on like what's uh what should the community be aware of at the moment well we do have one one thing that we have before which is really cool as you know we previously partnered with pay expert which is a company that provides a global payment processing services and basically our goal with that partnership is to provide market research on the blockchain to our platform to their clients which are like uh, retail brands who do e-commerce stuff like that so we can help them to know their customers and what and what they think about their products but we have a new new like operation coming up we sign an agreement to integrate the banker protocol and review net network after the ico and that gives us <laughs> that's new genius, actually i mean banker is yeah yeah they're awesome so, so basically that will give us some amazing opportunities because what they do is allow you to convert to each other. Uh, so uh, we will have the ability to convert REW tokens to Ethereum, for example, right on the platform without going to the exchange. Yeah, that actually means that an, an ordinary user who uses our app and has some REW tokens doesn't need to go into all that exchange fuss and sign up and do the KYC and wait for it and risk getting scammed maybe, he can just convert the REW to Ethereum right on the app and use it as a C fits. So awesome. So the, trade off liquidity. As soon as the token's released, we're going to see a basically liquidity pool for people to start trading, which is fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So some questions for Reinhardt. So yeah. Reinhardt, as I mentioned before, is our CFO, very, very talented when it comes to numbers. So. We are uh, currently running the ICO. We are in the pre-sale stage. So Reinhardt, talk us through what users can expect if they were to jump in with us. OK, well, I mean, first of all, I would like to show you how you can participate in, in the ICO. So when you go to our website, review.network, then at the very top, you will actually see here our logo, how it works, an explanation, what Peter and even just have given us in more detail now, the white paper, the one page, and as well as like a tech paper. So when you scroll down a little bit, you see here our bonus structure and our calculator. So very often, like when you go like to an ICO website, you don't really know how many tokens you get. Here, you can play around a little bit with the numbers. So when you kind of like an investor that wants to invest like one to five Ethereum, you get a bonus of like 20%. So let's say, for example, I want to invest like three Ethereum today. And here you see you get approximately like 100,000 root tokens, which includes already your 20% bonus. When you have an investor that invests a little bit more between like five and, and 30 Ethereum, then you get a 30% bonus. So let's type in, for example, 10 Ethereum, and you will see it will automatically update the number of like root tokens you get as well as your bonus. And like for people who really want to support our project, they also have the possibility of like investing more, like for example, 30 plus, and they get a bonus of 40%. So what we have seen so far was actually quite positive. In the seed round and at the very early stage, we raised like over like 1 million. To get the precise number, it's like 1.15 million. In addition to this, we have like in the pre-sale, which like ran now like for 13 days, 2,132 Ethereum allocated to our project. This number will be updated automatically when you go to the website, when you sign on, when you submit like your, your pledge, 1,000, close to 101,000. So the question is like now, why should you buy this token? So on the one hand, it's a really amazing project what we are building here. Because the tokens you can use on our platform in order what I uh, explained before, to get like some information. But also you can invest in this company or participate in the growth of this company. 
we have built some economic models behind it. So reviews, uh, online reviews, and like market research, a huge industry. And when we like just over like the next five years, get up like let's say like half of a percent of like the global like market share, which is not a lot, half a percent. Yeah, this company will be worth like millions, and that will be reflected in the token. So on the one hand, it's a really nice tool of exchanging information, writing reviews, receiving information. But also, I think it's like a great opportunity to participate in a project that will have like some long-term impact in this new economy we are seeing at the moment. Yeah. So a couple of quick questions to you that have come through. Yeah. Um, so the first one is, uh, I mean, obviously, the cryptocurrency market has taken a huge hit lately. Um, and someone has just mentioned, which is a really valid point, that you know, why why would you, I guess, put your Ethereum into this project over just holding your Ethereum or hodling, as trading community like to say, um, and, and just waiting for better days? I mean, why would they put it in now? Okay, I would like to compare it like with like a typical investment. So, for example, you can choose. I'm from Germany, from Bavaria. So, for example, I do an example there. So you can buy, for example, BMW stocks. So what will be your return over the next years in BMW? Certainly less than like investing in like a smaller company, in a startup company. So I would say like here in this space, Ethereum and Bitcoin are like the more established cryptocurrencies dash businesses. Here what we're creating is something new. So you can participate in something which is like what we built from the scratch, which is absolutely new. Of course, like it involves a higher risk, but also like much more opportunity. So, I mean, the investor or like the participator needs to choose if they want to say like, okay, like they believe in Ethereum is going to double in value. But I see like much more the possibility that our company grows much faster than the Ethereum, yeah, underlying where we're building our blockchain or our application on. So I really think like there's a lot of growth potential. And because we're a startup company, I think we will grow much, much faster than an established company when I compare it like to the traditional investor space. That yeah. makes sense. Makes sense. And the other question that came through, so can you actually purchase tokens with a credit card? Yes, we will implement this feature most likely this week. There are like a couple of like things we need to double check in terms of security, but we will implement it most likely this week on our platform and we will announce it I think probably on Wednesday or Thursday, but I'm really positive it will be possible. Okay. So just before we continue, um, I do want to say to everyone watching that nothing on this stream is financial advice. So we're obviously here talking about our project. Um, you know, whether or not you invest in the project, that's completely up to you. If you do need financial advice, seek a professional, someone who's accredited to actually give you financial advice. I highly recommend you before you put in any Ethereum to our project, make sure you read the white paper, the one pager, the tech one pager, and of course, any questions, you can jump into any of our community channels on Telegram, Twitter, Discord, um, all the links are on the website. But yeah, please, please, please do your research before putting in any funds to this project. Although, uh, as you just heard from Reinhardt, it's, uh, it's a promising project. Um, you know, the team have you know, real world business experience, which I feel maybe a lot of projects out there lack. Um, so we're not just a bunch of marketers that are, that are trying to pitch you this great idea. Uh, our expertise actually sits with running the business. So our, our marketing is, it's not what we're, you know, it's, it's not, we're not here trying to sell you a dream, if that makes sense. Um, all right, cool. So I guess uh, being in the pre-sale at the moment, to sum that up, it's the bonus. You get in now this month, um, and the bonus structure there will, will, I guess, allow you to have a little bit of a head start on the uh, on the public sale. Um, so another question that's come through is, will you be able to mine REW tokens, RU tokens? Guys, do you want to handle that? Yeah, so no. Answer is no, because we are running on Ethereum platform. You can mine Ethereum, but REW is a utility token which can be used for, like, run services on our platform, so no mining. Okay, cool. And we, we did sort of cover this, but just in case uh, Michael didn't hear this before, so I mean, why should why should somebody give us their personal information? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So they are actually not giving us their personal personal information. Sorry, uh, the personal information that they will be using to be targeted by the service or filtered in the filter re reviews stays on their device. And whenever they choose to sell it for REW tokens, uh, the buyers don't actually get their information. They just get the proof that they like match a certain uh, certain range. For example, they match a uh, age range from 20 to 30 years old, but we don't, or anyone for that matter, except them, doesn't know how old they are. Okay. So, uh, and the other question I, I do get quite a bit when talking about the project is, people ask me, do I need to give all my information to you? Or can I just selectively choose which parts I want to give to you? And if that is the case, what's the advantage or disadvantage of, I guess, giving as much information as possible? Not giving, but uh, pu you know, putting in as much information as possible to the system platform. That's a great question. There, like, with the advance of GDPR right now, uh, you see websites who are uh, doing the same thing they always did, like tell you either you accept all our terms or you cannot use the service, which is like not not very good. <laughs> it's not for uh, for users what we should give them. So we devised our platform to be not only privacy focused, like built by design to support user privacy, but also it can work with varying amounts of information that you share about yourself. If you just share the age, that's okay, but you will only be able to, tar to be targeted for surveys that have um, an age filter to them. Okay, so it's effectively, in, in, it's in the user's best interest to give as much data as they feel comfortable giving. Um, okay. To sum it up as well, the user owns their own dump, so we don't, I guess, have access to that data per se. It's not like we can take that data and just start selling it. Um, effectively, they need to be matched up to a company running a survey, uh, and then the actual information itself is not passed on. It's just used uh, to match up the user to the survey. That's right. Okay, excellent. Um, so a bit more about the token. So someone's asked, you know, tell us, what, what is the root token built on? How does it work? Okay, so as we said, it's a utility token running on Ethereum network, and it's an ERC-20 compatible token. So that's like a standard which you can use. And uh, the point of the REW token is to be used on our platform, firstly, for companies to run the market research campaigns. So what happens is they get some tokens into their account, they use them to create a survey, and each time they get an answer, they uh, those tokens are transferred to the user who gave the answer. That's like the most basic uh, way of monetization in the review network platform. Okay. But then on the other hand, we have online reviews where users can actually filter the reviews as we talked about. They can ask only to see the reviews from a restaurant that were uh, written by locals or people in their age group. So they would actually use REW tokens to pay for that information for others to share uh, that they match into that group. Yeah, for example, you can browse reviews uh, for free, but if they want some specialized information from someone who matches their demographics, then they need to give out a certain amount of REW token for it. So. Okay. And what about, so again, another, I'm, I'm throwing in, so th this is question time. So we're going to be jumping a little bit back and forth. Um, I'm throwing in some questions that I get asked, you know, out and about on my uh, daily pitch of Review Network. Um, scalability. Do we have any concerns about scalability issues on the Ethereum platform? If so, what are we currently doing or exploring to uh, resolve that if, the, if it arises? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a great question. Basically, as we've seen with crypto kidneys yeah. incident, Ethereum network can become very slow if uh, there are a lot of people using it, but they are working on implementing solutions that will allow them to scale. They're not live yet. So we are exploring various possibilities. Right now, we're building the platform on Ethereum, but uh, we are exploring using side chains also as uh, options, like you have the main Ethereum chain, where the main uh, settlement of the transaction happens, but you also have a side chain where you do the things that require high throughput and lower transaction fees. Yeah, basically we are aware of the scalability issues and we are currently in talks with some other well-known projects about 
types of cooperation. So everything is open to to implementation in the final stage. But for now and for better, we will be using Ethereum blockchain and IPFS storage. So. Okay, excellent. So Reinhardt, we have another question for you. Um, KYC process, what, what information are we after? It's very simple. When you go to our website and when you fill out like your, your interest of uh, purchasing the tokens, we will initially ask you for your passport and your. Of course, when you're an institutional investor, we will get in touch with you and will require some more information. Also, like when you commit a very large amount, let's say like 100,000 euros or a US dollar equivalent to this, we will ask you a couple of additional questions. But for the moment, when you sign up, simply on our website, passport and utility bill, we'll do it. When we be, when we need more, we get in touch with you. Okay, excellent. So pretty standard, yeah. Yeah, pretty standard process, um, nothing too intrusive, which is good. So I guess uh, we could pretty much wrap this up. Um, so with most of the questions, um, as I mentioned earlier, look, we, we do plan to do these live streams a little bit more often. Um, we feel it's a good way to, to interact with the community and, and for you guys to have, I guess, a direct access to us. Um, ask us any questions you have. Um, website, obviously, review.network. Um, on the website, as Reinhardt mentioned and showed before, there is a calculator to show you how much, uh, how many RU tokens you'll get for your investment. I do highly recommend you read the white paper. If you want, start with a one pager. There is a tech one pager. And if you just want to get involved on the platform, we do have that beta sign up page open. So we've opened it up to another 100,000 users. Uh, but based on what we've seen the past few weeks, that will run out quite fast. So if you are interested, get on now, sign up, get your free root tokens. And then once the beta is launched, you guys will be first on the platform. So that's it from me. Do you guys have anything else you wanted to discuss or talk about before we wrap this up? Well, I just wanted to thank everyone for their engagement and questions. There were some really great questions and uh, I hope we gave like great answers. So for the ones that didn't get the chance to, to be live with us here, we will do this more often, as you said. So there will be more time. Yes. Thank you guys. And you will all get your chance to ask us anything plenty more times. Excellent. So yeah, guys, social media channels, um, Telegram, Discord, the, the community members, are, uh, community management teams in there. Uh, any questions, throw it at them. They'll get in contact with us and, and we will do these streams again. I guess uh, Peter and Ivan need to get back to building the platform. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Ryan Hart is... He's, he's, the numbers. He's got some interesting stuff coming up. Um, so there are some interesting things in the work at the moment. We haven't mentioned it on today's stream because they're not fully polished, uh, but we'll be dropping that, I guess, in the next week or so, which uh, we're very excited about. Yeah. All right, guys, well, that's it from us. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch and we'll do this stream again soon. Yeah, talk to you soon. Oh, thanks, guys. Bye. See you. Bye -bye. See ya.